Here in South Asia, bordering India, Afghanistan, and China is Pakistan, which is officially recognized as the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, with Islamabad as its capital and most important of its cities. This country was formerly a part of India, and today it is a large military and economic power in the world, ranking 26th in the world in terms of purchasing power. Pakistan is a country rich in black gold, consisting of oil, coal, and iron. The country is famous for its petroleum, mineral, wool, chemical, and natural silk industries. It is also known for planting rice, sesame, aromatic plants, and many other ingredients essential for the spices industry, which is an integral cultural part of the country. Pakistan was once home to many ancient civilizations. Today, it consists of four regions that are characterized by ethnic and linguistic diversity. This diversity extends to all members of society, but most of them embrace the Islamic faith. The country has a large population that made it the second largest Muslim country in the world. Here to the north of Pakistan, the geographic nature of the country takes a more severe shape to become more rugged in general, but it maintains a strategic location linking East and West Asia with its center and south. It is Afghanistan, the Asian Republic, which was one of the ancient focal points of the Silk Road and home to many ancient and modern nations throughout successive eras. The population of this country consists of several ethnic groups. While Islam is the official religion here, the vast majority of Afghan society embraces Islam, where it is a unified pillar of the spectrum of society in the face of any family or tribal disputes or separations. And it is a way of life that regulates social behavior and makes it more friendly, cohesive, and tolerant. The convergent geographical rhythms here set a harmonious way of living in these two neighboring countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. A distinctive Ramadan atmosphere that takes you to a world full of the spirit of solidarity and compassion that is also full of faith and piety. Between the diversity reflected in the Pakistani climate and the toughness of the Afghan nature, the days of Ramadan progress slowly, drawing their own rituals, beautiful details of life, similar to the good spirit of the people of the two countries, the simplicity of the holy month, and the pleasure of worship.
over its four regions. Pakistan prepares to receive the holy month. The markets bustle with noise, and the shops begin to prepare large quantities of popular dishes and sweets. In addition to the spread of prayer carpets in different colors, varying types, and inscriptions, as well as incense, scents, and perfumes. The sale of fabric flourishes, where Pakistani women buy it to sew new dresses to wear during the exchange of visits and invitations to iftar. While decorations are absent from Afghan environments, where life tends to be more simple here, people move away from the manifestations of adornment and tend to abide more by the atmosphere of faith and worship. The women of these two countries strive to clean the houses and rearrange them and provide all necessities for the holy month. The mosques are transformed into spiritual and religious beacons during Ramadan. They prepare to perform maintenance work, cleaning and renovating the old paint. They are provided with the equipment that they lack, specifically traditional hats that are common in Pakistan, which are given inside the mosques for the visitors to choose from to prepare for their prayers. These reflect the aesthetics of this country during Ramadan and the beauty of its details, such as the mosque, Bat Shahi in Lahore, it is known as the Royal or Emperor Mosque, which prepares to receive large numbers of Muslims. It is one of Pakistan's most famous religious landmarks. The Four Minaret Mosque was built in 1671. Its main prayer hall is divided into seven sections by many arcs. And its courtyard is considered one of the largest in the world it can accommodate tens of thousands of worshippers, and it is usually filled and a common visit place during the month of Ramadan. As for Afghanistan, many Afghani people are keen to visit the Blue Mosque in the heart of the northern city of mazar al sharif The mosque was built in 885 Hijri, and it possesses an urban architectural style that made it one of the most famous historical mosques in the Islamic world, and an architectural wonder that captivates the site. Those symbolic mosques become a destination for many during Ramadan, where the people would gather in the houses of God to complete their worship and accept kindness and righteousness. The daytime becomes stagnant and calm, as movement within the streets of Pakistan and Afghanistan lessens, except for special situations. As the Maghrib prayer draws near, movement and flow gradually returns. Everyone strives to meet the needs of the family and create a rich and distinctive Ramadan table before iftar. These hours bear witness to the most beautiful meetings and family gatherings, with neighbors and family increasing the invitations and food exchange between one another. Where everyone shares Ramadan food, and they share solidarity in its merits. Pakistan has been able to gather a variety of dishes that adapted to the climate of its different regions, 
and formed a mixture of indigenous and neighboring cultures such as Hinduism, Arab, Persian, and others. The bakura and samosa, which are stuffed with meat or potatoes, have been able to unite the various regions of Pakistan on these two dishes as a popular food that are special to Pakistan. The country's shops and markets take pride in providing large quantities of these popular dishes to meet the growing demand for them. The Ramadan table is only complete with the jalabi dessert and the popular Ruh Afza drink, which is used instead of water at the iftar table while some Pakistanis prefer it with milk and grated almonds. In Afghanistan, people here make simple and inexpensive Ramadan banquets, where Afghan cuisine has benefited from the country's location at the crossroad of many cultures. Meat and rice are the most popular items, as well as bolani, bakura, and mento which is a meat-stuffed pastry. In addition to all of this, the Afghani tea is a drink that is always present, while dates and milk remain companions of the two countries' banquets during the holy month of Ramadan. The joyous egg battle is one of the social customs associated with the month of Ramadan. It is celebrated by young people in the city of Peshawar, where a competition is held in which young people fight to break boiled eggs that have been painted with bright colors and compete through phases that last from dinner to sahur, among an atmosphere of familiarity and laughter. As Pakistan and Afghanistan are unified by many foods, lifestyles, and details, they are also united in Ramadan rituals that spread throughout most of the Indian subcontinent. The two countries also celebrate the first fast of the family's children, who perform this duty for their very first time. Parents and relatives gather bearing gifts and crumpled clustered necklaces, they prepare for the occasion with special ceremonial dishes, which is loved by children, creating unforgettable moments, relieving the difficulty of the first day, and motivating them to complete their fasting. The completion of reading the Holy Quran in Afghanistan holds a large share of the attention of Muslims, with invitation cards that are similar to wedding cards being printed for this occasion and it is conducted within an atmosphere of faith and competition that purifies the hearts and souls. Ramadan is a month of goodness, blessing, and compassion. Its spirituality is not complete except by Muslims' continuous work of righteousness. In various villages and cities of the Afghan states, group iftars are held by individual initiatives as one of the most important manifestations of social solidarity in these countries. As good people visit the regions of the poor and those in need, provide as much as they possibly can. The banquets are the same in Pakistan as it is with its neighbor, where you cannot distinguish the poor from the rich, who all provide free food for the poor, the students in their dorms, and religious schools, and for everyone who is fasting in general. Fasting people send iftar meals from their homes to the mosques nearby on a daily basis. During this holy month, Pakistanis save a large part of their time to work in charitable organizations that provide gifts and aid to those who are in need. Initiatives are organized to distribute alms, donations, and rations in which everyone strives towards giving charity, gaining the rewards of Allah seeking his satisfaction and obeying his commands. As he said to them in his holy book, In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful were spoken by Allah.
with their hats of different shapes and colors, which are embroidered with Islamic drawings and with their beads that adorn their hands and their tongues giving praise to Allah. The Pakistanis go to the mosques to perform tarawih prayers. Recitation circles in public fields are held, helping the illiterate learner to read and recite the Holy Quran. The same thing happens in Pakistani mosques as well, as they hold hundreds of worshippers performing tarawih prayers with their children, keen on teaching them the righteous principles of religion, standing between the hands of Allah in obedience, love, and reverence seeking forgiveness and his satisfaction, united by their pure intentions and the same law. Their tongues and hearts attest that there is no God but Allah alone, with no partner. Pakistanis are keen to preserve the atmospheres and rituals of Ramadan. Therefore, the Masaharadi is present with his drum and stick to wake people up and alert them before the dawn or Fajr prayer, where they greet him with food and drinks. His melodies adorn the silence of night, and he inscribes the most beautiful Ramadan tales in people's memories. The people of these two countries live through moments of faith, as the final 10 days of Ramadan approach. Souls engage in a race with time to get the greatest rewards. Therefore, the charities and the alms increase, and Muslims revive various religious rites and worship, isolating themselves in mosques hoping to receive the blessings of the night of decree, for this night is worth more than a thousand months. In the midst of this atmosphere, the mosques turn into a haven and a destination for believers, in which they stay in for various reasons. Some of them immerse their souls with the blessings of reading and finishing the Holy Quran, while some of them perform the prayer of Tahajjud. Some pray to Allah in pure worship while standing between His hands with a pure heart and pure intent. People adorn their worship by paying Eid al-Futr alms, that they pay from their own wealth to show affection, honor, and closeness to Allah, a joy for the soul at the coming of Eid al-Fadr. Between the blessed days of Ramadan and the joy of Eid al-Futr, the time of the final night in Pakistan passes through with the anticipation of the crescent. So the people could celebrate in different ways. Markets start with celebrations and adornments and lights, and the shops are filled with new clothes as Afghans and Pakistanis flock to buy the traditional dress of the holiday known as Shalwar. 
even if its details differ in the different regions of Pakistan. The joy of Eid is complete only by henna inscriptions that decorate the hands of Pakistani women, which are adorned with colorful Eid bracelets in a social tradition that people still follow in this country till this very day. Our journey in Pakistan and Afghanistan is over. We shall meet tomorrow to learn about the customs and traditions of another people group through Ramadan in the Islamic world.